Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Motor Mouth and Wild Bill Winters. And Bill, how are you doing tonight here on the South Florida Tribune Broadcast? Doing great. All right, so we got a few nice, interesting agendas to get to, and we'll go right to it here. Let's talk about Janoris Jenkins being picked up by the New Orleans Saints. What are your thoughts about it? Well, I'm happy for him. And, um, you know, he was in the fifth year of his contract. He's all pro. Uh, the Saints could use him because they're loading up with veteran players, uh, you know, because they have a real good shot at winning the Super Bowl. And what I like is that uh, he admitted that he was insensitive with the word or comment that he used. He actually spoke to... Uh, a woman with a mentally challenged child, and he learned a lot, and uh, he apologized and said he was insensitive, and that, you know, and that's what a grown man does, and uh, you know, he said he learned a lot. He was ignorant of uh, some of the things that go through with people that have uh, you know mentally challenged uh, children, and uh, he's probably going to do some work and take some sensitivity training and help in that cause. So he turned a negative into a positive, so I'm really happy that both parties, both the Saints and uh, him and and people that uh, have uh, this type of issue at home are all happy. So that was a good thing. So I was glad to hear that. All right. Now that you're on the subject of a player being cut and then obviously getting a start with a contending team, I'm going to jump into this one really quickly. Terrell, Uggs, Terrell Suggs uh, – well, was claimed by the Kansas City Chiefs. What are your thoughts about the addition of Suggs going down the stretch out in Missouri? Well, he, he was actually yeah he was actually claimed by a couple teams. However, the Chiefs were able to get him because they have a uh, worst record of the teams that claimed him. Right. Uh, so uh, you know he that's a good thing and it's you know he's going to jump right in there. Uh, and it's kind of interesting that they're going to be playing their old team pretty quickly, his old team the Ravens pretty quickly. So, uh, you know, that's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what shakes that. But, uh, you know, I've been in pro football for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, the playoffs are a totally different animal. And, uh, you know, they're loading up with players they know that are seasoned that have uh, been involved in that. It's not time for rookies. So with uh, T-Sizzle, uh, it's a great move by the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm lucky to get him. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Chiefs' downfall in the postseason has been their lack of defense. And, you, you know, paint uh, – Patrick Mahomes can only do so much, but you do have to stop the other team, as they always say, right, Bill? Oh, yeah. It's all about rushing the passer. Right. And Terrell Suggs is as good as there is at doing it. So more power to the Chiefs. It doesn't hurt that he does have familiarity with the Ravens, so he could probably tip their hand a little bit about what to do versus what not to do. So nothing like your own internal scouting report without using any other methods except legitimate ones. All right, another big – Well, any, I would think any bit of information you can get would be better than nothing, even though obviously based on what you're telling me, that's probably a little bit more overrated in football than any other sport for sure. So, but that said, yeah, it's, just not, it's just not as detailed as you think it would be because many right. of these coaches got everything broken down. Right. The fact that they play each other so much, they already know. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a little thing, but it's not much. So it's not a great factor when they want to trade for something. Okay. All right, well, let's talk about uh, one of the major events that took place uh, earlier this evening, and I'll let you chime in on this one because it's as timely as it can get. Uh, Tom Coughlin getting fired in Jacksonville. Well, um, you know, there's, there's a transition going on. Uh, Tom probably recommended, uh, represented the old school 
a way of doing things, uh, you know, from an organizational point of view. And with the social media and with all the exposure that's going on here today and all the stuff that's going on off the field, uh, quite frankly, I think the thing that really nailed it was that the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, the NFL Players Association, has received, you know, received complaints about ball clubs. But 25% of the players' grievances were, uh, came from the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, organization. And that's not a good sign. But what that does is it kind of says that, you know, we're going from old school to new school, and maybe some of these old school things that have been working in the past aren't working with today's generation. Uh, you know, and uh, it's sort of at the crossroads. And when you see a guy like Tom Coughlin, who's a, uh, they had it going on in Jacksonville. They, you know, they really did, but the wheel came off down there. And uh, I think that, you know, some players uh, did some unusual things, uh, you know, like pulling up to the um, training camp in a French truck saying it's time to get paid and sort of organ- holding an organization hostage. You know, that just kind of shows you where the new school is coming from. Um, you know, the fact that the, their quarterback that they made a trade for got hurt. Uh, so a lot of times these organizations or these managements are tied to the quarterbacks they bring in, and if they get hurt, uh, you know, a lot of times, well, it's time to go, and then you have a lot of other stuff going on, like the grievances and all that, uh, where it just turns into a quagmire and you start digging into a hole. And uh, in this case, I just think they decided to uh, cut ties, start all over again, because that franchise is really struggling. And, uh, you know, they've got to maybe clean house and start all over again. But a lot of it is just if your quarterback stays healthy, you know, you're okay. And Nick Foles got hurt early. Uh, and Minshew played fairly decently uh, against the Raiders. So they're kind of looking like, hey, maybe we don't need to listen to this guy. And, you know, the same thing happened with Ron Rivera at Carolina. You know, Cam Newton gets hurt and they decide to clean house. So a lot of it's tied to how well these players that you draft perform. And there's one thing that you can't control, and that's injuries. So uh, in this case, uh, you know, it's a run of bad luck. And I, I'm thinking that Nick Foles has stayed healthy and, uh, you know, that the Jacksonville team had played decently and that they have all these off-the-field distractions, uh, that he's probably had to still be there as, the, you know, the chief operating officer of the Jaguars. So, you know, it's a new world we live in. True. Yeah, well, obviously quarterbacks getting hurt. Uh, it's certainly, and I, it's funny how you talk about Ron Rivera. I think he'd be a good uh, coach in Jacksonville, but who knows where he'll land. We'll find out over the coming weeks where he goes. But old school versus new school is definitely what it's all about. And, you know, Jalen Ramsey certainly uh, went on Twitter and was basically t- telling that everybody that he told you so. So you can tell that there was more. Uh, there was no love lost between Jalen Ramsey and Tom Coughlin, for sure. Well, you know, what's really interesting is, uh, and this is my personal opinion, uh, Jalen Ramsey, the last thing I'd be doing is, with the way we played the other night and the way we got beat down, and then you're on Twitter, I don't think winning and losing really means much to these guys anymore. I agree. I agree. It's all about you me. You pay a player a ton of money. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, they just, you know, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's, like I said, it's a different, uh, different focus today. Yeah. You no. know, we got players swapping jerseys yeah. after games. I mean, you know, that could be done. Uh, it doesn't have to be done in front of Jets fans, and it doesn't have to be, you know, like a big social scene and all this kind of stuff. And you know, you just think that could be done somewhere else. So putting stuff out there on Twitter. You know, and doing all this stuff socially, it's just, you know, it's all entertainment now. It's all fluff, and it doesn't really mean a lot. Right. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, um, some of the stuff that's going on uh, is just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, and, you know, it's just you have to bite your tongue, but at the same time, that's where we're going. And I just think some people are going to like it and some people aren't, but I think eventually it's going to go back to the middle again, and uh, we're going to get back to playing football and stop with all the off-the-field nonsense. Okay, well, let's talk about some off-the-field stuff before we go back on the field with uh, some football predictions. Uh, we're going to let you start off with XFL contracts. All right, well, um, I, it was really interesting. I was talking to my contacts today, 
and uh, you know, I was they, they they scrapped the tier program for players, uh, and I think the XFL uh, kind of understands that what they want to do is get this first tier under their belt. Uh, they don't have to spend a lot of a ton of money on player salaries, so they're going to have basically we'll call it a one tier program, where you're going to you know each there's going to be eight teams. 40 guys are going to dress. There are going to be five men on basically we call a taxi squad. There's going to be a farm team in Frisco, Texas. So if guys get injured, they can bring them off of those rosters, off that roster of their team, and, and fill it in with a guy that's in shape and has been laying around, you know, on the couch and stuff. So, you know, basically he just has to learn the offense. Uh, they've been in camp, mini camps all this week, and last week uh, they end up this Friday. And they have two weeks off, and then all the teams are coming into Houston for training camp. So they're just doing, seeing what they got, and uh, doing some walkthroughs and, and learning the offense a little bit. But as far as the pay, if you go all the way in the XFL and you win it all, the most you'll make is $100,000. And basically, it works something like this. Uh, remember how I told you before that there would be, you know, 20 guys making 100 and and another 10 making 250, 300, and maybe another five or six making, you know, the big money, the three to five, six hundred thousand dollars. Well, they're going to, they scrap that program. So each guy is going to make a thousand, eighty six. If they, if they get activated for a game, they get another sixteen hundred. All right. And then if they win the game, they get another twenty two hundred. So uh, that's basically the incentive. And then when you, if you go into the playoffs, all right, they're going to be uh, two. I think what uh, four teams in the playoffs, uh, and basically each play, each team is going to get eighty two hundred dollars, uh, I believe, or eighty five hundred. I'm not sure. I think it's eighty two or eighty five hundred um, for uh, playing in those in that playoff game, and then in the, in the championship game, uh, the same amount of money for both teams. There's no, you know, winner or loser. They both get an equal share. And then they haven't decided what they're going to pay the winner yet, you know, in addition to what I just talked about. So the bottom line is, as the fan, all you got to do is break it down like this. If you win in the XFL and you run the table and you win the championship game, you're going to make $100,000. Uh, all right, if, let's say, on the other end, if you don't win any games, you'll make 55000 Now, what they're really interested in, if you look at the business model, really what I'm seeing is the similar to the USFL. The first year... Uh, you know, they paid the players. They had a $2 million payroll. Uh, they are paying the guys some pretty decent money. Uh, but the next year, the money got a lot bigger. A lot of that had to do with Trump coming in, you know, and wanting an NFL team and, and then going out and getting Doug Flutie and Herschel Walker and breaking the bank and raiding the NFL. Uh, in this case, they're going to do it the exact opposite. Uh, they're going to go out and they're going to go for younger guys. All right, so the thing that I was looking for is – whether or not they, we right now, uh, you know, the XFL has the best 560 guys that aren't playing in the National Football League. So, you know, we can talk a little bit about that. You know, I've kind of broken it down a little bit, but I just wanted to get your opinion on what you thought of those contracts. Uh, you know, I think that you're going to get a lot of young, hungry guys that are going to want to play uh, that are young, that want to try to play their way into the National Football League. And I think that's where the XFL is going right now. Because they're spending a lot of money on things like workman's comp and insurance and stadium leases and all that kind of stuff. And they don't, they don't want to overspend, even though they have the money and they want to get that first year under the belt before I think they start opening the coffers a little bit more and paying these players maybe what we talked about, you know, a couple of weeks back, you know, a lot, a lot more money than 55000 So what do you think, Scott? What do I think, Bill? Can you first, hear something like that? Yeah, you know what? I think – there's, this is a smart move by the XFL. 55000 basically is what you're saying, minimum. And you're also looking at uh, 100000 You You have to be smart with how you spend your money. And Vince McMahon already lost the league because he was foolish in the way he man, man, mismanaged the funds. So you'd like to think you learned a little something. Get through that first year, and you see how uh, the TV exposure kicks in and the interest and then eventual expansion. I, I actually like what you told me here. This is definitely a big improvement over what there was before. One tier paid, the taxi squad, you know, younger guys. You know, what, are, are they on one-year contracts? Is that what it is, too? Yeah, well, they, they were going to be three-year contracts. 
Right. Uh, now I 